Isaiah 8 and verse 20 tells us, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, is because there is no light in them. That's what the word of God is telling us. So I won't say to you today that we need no law. God's people do not need law to guide them. Uh, the word of God is telling us that uh, God has a set rule, God has a set of laws uh, that governs over us, and we ought to be obedient to them. It is the way God would have it. In the same manner that the universe is obedient to Him, we are only part of this marvelous creation that we see before our eyes. We are part of the creative work of God when we see the animals and the birds and I see the, the daddy long legs that the kids hate so much. I look at it suddenly and I said, look at that. Why did God really create that thing? What is, what is it really doing? What is this thing all about? But he created it for his own purpose. And you know, I really don't know why. And I look at it and I'm, I'm thinking, but its lifespan is so short. What's the deal with that? It comes for a few weeks in the summer, that's it. And it comes, it comes back again next summer. Well, so are we. They are obedient to God. And you look at the sun, it comes up every morning. And you know it's day because it gives it light. It goes down. Well, you know it's night. There's no light. Uh, you see, there's such a wonderful work going on here, and they are obedient to God. They continue the same way He said that. The moon comes and it goes through different stages, but it is obedient to God. So is the, the, the different climate that we see, the, the weather, uh, for instance, the different seasons that we see, the spring. The beginning of seasons, summer, autumn, winter. You never see winter in, 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 in June or July, it is summer. They, they continue to be obedient to God. God set them there for signs, for seasons, for years. And so is His law over us. And to those that profess, and preach the word of God, if they preach contrary to the law of God, the testimony of Jesus Christ is because there is no light in them. Thus saith the word of God. And we are quoting, and we read this verse in Isaiah 8 and verse 20, and yes, we need to dig a little deeper into that, see what it is talking about. We need to continue. As Isaiah tells us, line upon line upon line, precept upon precept. So this verse is not isolated, it's not standing there by itself. We have many other verses we can put with that. Christ is the light of this world, my brethren. Christ, Jesus Christ, is the light of this world. This is the person we want to be with. From a very young age, turn with me to Luke, <clears throat> when Jesus was brought to the temple by his parents, be blessed, in verse 32, hear what the man of God is saying here, Simeon is saying, in verse 32, a light to light the Gentile and the glory of thy people Israel. Jesus and his parents, they were shocked to hear these words concerning Jesus, their son, Mary and Joseph. They were astonished to hear such prophecy from Simeon, and he blessed both of them. But he is saying here, at age two, I believe, that Jesus is a light to lighten his people and also the Gentiles, or the whole world. Because we understand in John 3 that 
Jesus came that the world through him can be saved. John 1, 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And 319, I'm going to just read a few verses. 319 of John. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. And 8, 12 of John. John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And 1235. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. See, brethren, Jesus is that light. He is life unto us. Many men, and when Jesus was here on this earth, did not follow him. Really didn't believe that he was the Son of God. Some thought it was blasphemy for him to refer to himself as the Son of God. Well, he is saying here that he is the light of this world. Jesus is saying in Matthew 5 verse 14, Matthew 5, turn with me to Matthew 5, verse 14, and we'll read 14 and 15. There are many verses here. First of all, he's saying that we are the salt of the earth. <clears throat> we are the salt of the earth. <clears throat> and then he says, ye are the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. The verses we read before in John, Jesus said that I am the light of the world. But he also said that in a little while, light won't be with you. So Jesus was preparing the people to carry on that work, to continue shining that light. And he said to his followers, his believers, his He's speaking to the chosen and to a great multitude that was following him at the time, saying, Ye are the light of the world. But guess what? A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So, now that we profess to be followers of Jesus Christ, everyone will see us. Every, not, not God only, but everyone will see and say, well, I thought that this person professed to be a light. Well, why is that person practicing the same thing I'm doing? I don't care what I do. I live that carefree life. I don't have to be governed by any law. I, I live my life, but hey, what's going on here? Okay, because Jesus is saying, we cannot hide anymore. We cannot hide. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men like a candle and put it on a bushel, but on a candlestick, and give it light unto all that are in the house. And then it says, Let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So, I have a responsibility, and I, I know that. I know that I have a responsibility to let my light shine. And the purpose for that is so that men are drawn to the light. Not to me, but to the Father. 